Stars at Night with Patrick Ball. Well, I've had my eyes glued to the telescope for the last three days. Because at this time of year, conditions are ideal for viewing Mrs. Malone across the road taking her clothes off. And this is all tremendously exciting. Of course, astronomers have been looking at Mrs. Malone for a long time now, and there is a good deal of controversy about her surface. Some people, some people have said that her surface is covered in a thick layer of dust, not unlike that found on the moon, or on Miss Goose Budget in Andromeda Road. However, observers using the really big telescope at Jodrell Bank actually claim to have seen Mrs. Malone getting into the bath. So this does cast a new light on the nature of her surface. Also tonight, Mr. Moggis from down the road is orbiting in the vicinity of Mrs. Malone, so perhaps we can foresee in the very near future a manned landing. Radio Prune is on the air, bringing you excitement, spectacle, a riot of colours, incredible costumes, brilliant dancing, a veritable feast for the eyes. Starring Tim Brooke Taylor, Graham Garden, David Hatch, Joe Kendall and Bellotti. We apologise for the loss of your picture. For the time being, we shall continue in sound only. With another edition of I'm Sorry, I'll Read That Again. 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 Not again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All you prune lovers, this is Dave the Rave on the wireless wave, so stay close and tune to prune, because we've got a whole bag of goodies lined up just for you. So let it all hang out as Radio Prune swings into the 70s with a million trendy, up-to-date, brand-new programs. So what are we waiting for? Let's go, go, go with today's real cool sound. <laughs> and now, it's the wireless doctor. Hello, well... Today we'll be answering listeners' questions. We have in the studio a group of patients who want to put some questions to our panel of experts. On our panel we have an ear, nose and throat surgeon. Good afternoon. <laughs> a Harley Street throat specialist. Good evening. And an Old Compton Street skin specialist. Hello, darling. And a celebrated... And a celebrated psychiatrist who must, of course, remain anonymous. Yes, of course. I'd hate anyone to know that I was really a Dr. W. Money of 18 Gibbon Terrace. <laughs> Private consultations anywhere, anytime. Come and see me, I assure you. If you're loony, I can cure you. <laughs> Thank you. And now, let's hear the first question. Doctor, how can I stop ringing in my ears? Answer the telephone, boom-boom. And the next. <laughs> I broke my leg yesterday. What shall I do? Limp. Boom, boom. <laughs> Next, please. Doctor, I have an unusual problem. Whenever I... My... I get a strange... In the... And an irresistible urge to... With a... In spite of the... I always... Every night with a... And a... What's worse, I don't enjoy riding my bike like I used to. <laughs> well, don't come crawling to me with your revolting problems, you nasty little... <laughs> and the next question, please. <laughs> no, I'm afraid there is no cure for complete loss of voice. <laughs> and that's all from the wireless doctor for today. Next week, we'll be looking at children's problem with our resident child expert. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> And now, here is the nine o'clock honours list. <laughs> Knighthoods have been awarded to Brigadier General Regimental for services to the Army, <laughs> to Mr. Jocelyn Comfy Bijou for services to the Navy, <laughs> and to Mr. Solly Greenblatt Shumko and Gefultefish already for £10,000. <laughs> the MBE has been awarded to Mr. Nosher Suggs for his services to refuse disposal, <laughs> and to Mr. Roger Taylor for his services to Rod Laver. Mr. Rolf Harris has been made a dame of the British Empire. A hospital spokesman said his condition was satisfactory. The OBE has been awarded to practically everybody for no apparent reason. And that ends the nine o'clock honours list, but stay tuned for a new honours list every hour on the hour. If you want a heavy station that is really a station, then you've got to get a given tune. I do the wonderful, wonderful things you love. I brought you a lady of room. Oh, I brought you a lady of room. Oh, 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 oh,
And now, Radio Prune continues at gunpoint with the news in Welsh. Flad Cymru am fath lwcio. Flad Fair Pwyl Gwyn Prime Minister E. David Hemmings i anon a win. Gil Gogerich. Gil Gogerich win Rob annual dinner Flan in the National Frog Trampling Institute. <laughs> My hen flan van her day, lesser spotted aardvark pudding. <laughs> Marion flan ferio guest of honor, Clive Jenkins. <laughs> Harrionet, Mr. Jenkins, in Ugaru and plate of wallaby stew, Guilherio, <laughs> Prime Minister's head. <laughs> Flanist with Prime Minister, Perio Sly Jenkins, Mochin Helio, steaming knit. <laughs> I flanty silio gogo goth, Ferrioned home rule for Wales. <laughs> Iterio quin lachalandaf all over the carpet. <laughs> Credit. <laughs> Credin Panius, Lagerich, Metropolitan Police, Robson Heredio, six months, Lach, Bob Wariach, Breach of the Peace, Gogerich, Morio, Garanwi, Indecent Exposure. <laughs> Dear sir, I must protest, like many others, I believe most sincerely that the Welsh people should have their own language and culture, and that Wales should have home rule, complete independence, and if possible, a stout wall built around it to keep them away from the rest of us. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Brigadier General Titfield Thunderbolt, MC, EMF, BFPO4, MCC, 101 for 3 declared, NUT and Looney, PS, OBE for no apparent reason. In reply to that letter, the BBC intends to maintain its policy of only broadcasting to a minority audience, or as it is sometimes called, a radio audience. So, before our next programme, the weather forecast in Portuguese, here are some of the other minority appeal programmes you can hear later tonight. At eight o'clock, Oculus Question Time is followed by Suddenly It's T.S. Eliot. And then, at ten o'clock, you can put your feet up and relax because Friday night is cost analysis night. And now, here are the football results. <laughs> League Division 1. Chelsea 2, Derby 0. No. Just a moment. I have a message from the Director General. Radio Prune is no longer a talks program. From now onwards, it's a music program. So everything on it has to be musical. Well, that's ridiculous. Yes, quite right. And that's exactly why we've done it. <laughs> we at the BBC may be very, very silly, but we can write letters. And, and, uh, ah, and at least we're consistent. So Radio Prune is now a music channel? Yes, carry on. Thank you. And now, here are the football results. Chelsea 2, Derby 0, Burnley 3, West Ham 1, Arsenal 24, Crystal Palace 7, Manchester City 5, Sheffield Wednesday 3, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0, Liverpool 11, West Bromwich Albion versus Stoke Lake kickoff. Coventry 17, Spurs 1100, Nottingham Forest 4, Manchester United scored a goal before half time, but it was disallowed. <laughs> League Division 2. <laughs> Blackburn 3, Swindon oh, yes, Stop it! Stop it! It's me again. You're cheating. It's got to be real music. We haven't got any real music. <laughs> then you'll just have to try the next best thing. Oh, well, come on, Ollie. Play, 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 play
much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Once again, we bring you Prune Play of the Week. And can we have tonight's author, please? Certainly, Anuna. <laughs> Tonight's author is Colonel Coonstrangler, OBE, MCC, 150 all out, who has just returned from spending six years living with African gibbons, and his play is called... <laughs> <laughs> or... Billy Bunter of Greyfriars School. Oh, dear. Billy Bunter of Greyfriars School. Well, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, we must warn you that this play is unsuitable for children and librarians in Ipswich. <laughs> It was the start of another jolly, rotten, stinking, measly school day at Greyfriars School. Sitting at their desks in the remove form room were the removes famous five, which consisted of three wizard chums for reasons of BBC economy. <laughs> Mr. Squelch, the beastly beak of Greyfriars, had not yet appeared, and the fellows were getting jolly restless. Bob Cherry was reloading his catapult. Wow. Pult. <laughs> Harry Wharton was trying to light a fag. <laughs> Then he came up with a super wheeze. <laughs> oh, what a super wheeze! Cherry and Wharton were jolly fed up with being kept waiting, and in the corner was another fellow who was browned off. Oh, my goodness, a brown off. <laughs> this was their tinted chum, Harry Ramsit's jam butty. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, where is the esteemed and gimlet eyed squint? Hang on, hang on. Now then, Mr. Cleverdick, so called Harry Ramsit jam roll. I have reason to believe you are impersonating a tinted person. What? What? I must ask you, are you written by Johnny Spate? No, I'm not. Oh! Oh! Oh, well, in that case, I'm arresting you. You are an incitement of racial prejudice and in very bad taste. No, no, but I am a real tinted person. Oh! Oh, oh! A real one with a speaking part in a comedy series. Yes, yes. Oh! Oh, well, in that case, please accept this OBE. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Harry Ramsett's jam and bread accepted the valuable award and began to file it down to a tensioning piece. But at that moment, the form room door creaked open. Open. I say, quick, you fellows, look, it's a beak. <laughs> it's Wharton's pet chicken. It's followed him to school. Oh, the poor thing is terrified. I hate to see a bird terrified. <laughs> That's better. Now, where the dickens is old Squelch? Even as Wharton opened his mouth, Mr. Squelch walked in. Oh, get out of my mouth, sir. <laughs> oh. Good morning, wretched children. Somebody kindly explain what this dead chicken is doing on the floor. Getting squashed, sir. <laughs> uh, huh? Get out your Latin books and start swatting. It's attracting the flies. It's, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, sir. I've got a fly paper. Oh, well, I suppose if they got something to read, they won't bother. <laughs> oh, now, I'm going to call the roll. Roll! <laughs> Bob Cherry. Yes, sir. Harry Morton. Yes, sir. Harry Ramsey Jamboree OBE. The <laughs> Apple is terrific, sir. <laughs> Billy Bunter. Bunter. Mr. Squelch screamed at the top of his voice. <laughs> sure enough, the very bosom of the school shook in its foundations. The whole building began to tremble. Oh, I'm frightened. Bunter was very late, and he was running as fast as his legs could carry him. mighty effort, he threw himself forward and stuck fast in the doorway. Oh, crikey! I say, you fellows, I'm stuck! Oh, Lord! I say, give a fellow a hand! Thank you! Oh, cripes! I hope old Squelch isn't here, because I'm beastly late! I am here, Bunter! Oh, Lord! Oh, crikey! Oh, B.E.! <laughs> If you're here, in that case, I'm not late. Uh, you're early, sir. And even if I am late, it's because my alarm clock was fast and I couldn't catch it. And anyway, anyway, the bus was delayed. And even if I didn't come on the bus, I couldn't get here through the snow. And even if it is hot and so 
Johnny. The sun melted the snow, and everything was bloody, and I had to swim here, and I can't swim, so I drowned. Didn't I, sir? I'm dead. Manta, that will do. Oh, good. <laughs> Manta, I want a serious word with you. Uh, how about anti-apartheid? No, no, no. That's too serious, and two words. I want to speak to you frankly, man to barrage balloon. <laughs> I have here a letter from your mother. Oh, crikey! It says, Dear Mr. Squelch, my boy Billy is too fat. If you can make him lose six stone by the end of term, I shall donate a large postal order to the Grey Friars Starving Teachers Fund. That's pretty spiffing of Bunter's mater. It's <laughs> very nice of his mother, too. <laughs> So Mr. Squelch set about getting Bunter to lose weight. Now, Bunter, I know a way to make you lose two stone of ugly fat. Yes? I'm going to chop your head off. Oh! Oh, Yaroo! Oh, no, sir! I'll go on a diet! I'll begin by eating my bedclothes! Eating your bedclothes? Yes, sir! They're diet sheets! Oh! Oh, oh crikey! Oh, crikey! Give a fellow a chance! <laughs> then, then look at this, sir! An advert for slimming by sauna baths! Well, the sauna, the better. Oh! oh. oh. But Bunter was not really able to manage on an empty stomach. I say, you fellows, I'm jolly famished. I could eat anything. Oh, look, a maggot. Oh, lovely grub. Oh. Oh. I'm jolly well wasting away, and I don't think it's good for a fellow to do without his tuck. Don't fret yourself, Bunter. Let's all go down to see Mary in the tuck shop. She usually has something in the oven. If only... <laughs> if only food and drink jokes. <laughs> Hello, Mary, have you got something for a chap to nibble? Certainly. Then would you like some? <laughs> Food and drink joke number one. Have you got any biscuits? I've got a couple of crackers. So I see. <laughs> Two. And I've got some hot cross buns. Oh, I'm stifling, damn it. <laughs> Two and a half. And some puff pastry. Mm, yes. <laughs> Five. Have you anything to drink? Yes, I've got soft drinks. Yes, I'm so wet. I can tell you. Four. Or a cordial drink. How do you do? So nice to see. <laughs> Three. I've, I've something special for you on the top shelf. Get them down, Mary. Oh! <laughs> Ten. <laughs> there, Mr. Bunter, cream cakes. And there's a nice apple pie over on that chair. Sit on that and enjoy yourself. <laughs> so Bunter tucked into his apple crumble. Have you got a milkshake? Sorry, no. Oh, well, just give me a glass of milk and I'll jump up and down a bit. Oh, crikey, this is boffo tuck. But still, Bunter wasn't satisfied. And as soon as Mary's back was turned, he pinched her buns. Bunter <laughs> persuaded the chums to have a midnight feast in the dorm. And so that night at 12 o'clock, as they heard the clock strike... Right, all out! <laughs> of the removed dorm, there was the sound of Mary nibbling. Stop nibbling, Mary. <laughs> then suddenly the door flew open and there stood Mr. Squelch. <laughs> I've caught you, all of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh that's torn it. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> so, you're having a midnight feast, eh? But I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, goody, how scrummy. Oh, no. Oh, 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 Lord, sir, you don't think I'm eating you, sir? Because I'm not, sir. And it, I mean, this isn't a cream and potato bread pudding I'm chewing, sir. And even if it is, it's a special non-fattening cream and potato bread pudding, sir. No, Bunter. No, Bunter. I'm disappointed in you. You've put back every pound you lost. Yes, sir. He won't be able to stop now. He's just growing and growing. Sure enough, Bunter couldn't stop eating. He ate everything in the dorm, including the beds and most of his school chums. He grew and grew and grew. Soon there was no room for any other pupils in the school. Bunter filled the whole of Greyfriars. His head learnt Latin in the main hall, while his left leg did PT in the gym. Mr. Squelch was broken-hearted. Oh, Bunter, look at yourself. Can't see that far, sir. Now, you've got to lose some weight before your mother arrives. Quick, nip outside and lie down under that steamroller. Oh! Oh, that's not a steamroller, sir. Isn't it, then? What is it? Can't you tell? <laughs> it's... It's me! What do you think 
that sounds like to those at home? Music! They don't know that Tim's camping around with no trousers on. <laughs> we have lately received a number of complaints that this program is too noisy and that our audience has been laughing too loud and clapping too much. In fact, we do make a fortune by exporting our spare applause to the Andy Williams show. <laughs> that our studio audience is barbaric, <laughs> rowdy, and totally out of control. <laughs> you at home think yourselves lucky you can't see them as well. <laughs> anyway, we're now going to do the next lot of jokes very, very quietly. And you lot will laugh. And you will clap very, very softly. Won't you? <laughs> and we trust it will be much more intelligible. To listeners at home. Shh. I am Lady Bumper. No, I see fatness runs in the family. No, it just walks very slowly. <laughs> but my son Billy is bigger than ever. Yes, he's so big he looks like. Yes, he's so fat. He's looking at me with my foot in the sack. And I'll give you another thing. What is this room? She has a strong trust in the test. And when he pulled the woman, he put it on the floor. And now, I'd like to finish with a little song. In Titi, I can you can't get over a girl like me, so you'll have to get up and go round. Well, that was better. <laughs> I'm sure that was much easier to understand. But now, here's something by way of a contrast. No weight at all. Oh, I feel better already. What are you going to do? I'll show you, Mom. Bunter, give me my hat. Now give me my cane. Now give me the moon. <laughs> give me the gun. Oh, I'm here. Take me. <laughs> now I am going to beat the boy. Oh, don't do that. He won't appreciate it. <laughs> oh, oh, squelch. Oh, squelch, or may I call you? I, I, I can't give you the postal order for Slimming Billy. I know. But you can still get it if you marry me. Actually, you don't really have to marry me. <laughs> but if you marry me, you will get the postal order. Very well, Lady Bunter. Name the day. I name this day. Amanda. Amanda? Yes, I'm underneath the earth. Ah, I'm a very old lady. Now, come away with me quickly. <laughs> but how about poor Billy? He's grown so fat. He fills the school and he can't move. He's very unhappy and I know he was expecting you to help him. You can't let him down. Yes, I can. Look, I'll stick a pin in him. <laughs> Well, that went down like a lead balloon. <laughs> <laughs> That was, believe it or not, I'm sorry I read it again, long-range weather forecast. The intermittent showers were Timbrook Taylor, Graham Garden, David Hatch, Joe Kendall, Bilotti, interrupted by scattered outbreaks from the producers David Hatch and Peter Titheridge. The scripts for the weather forecast were written by Graham Garden and Bilotti, the bright musical intervals were sung by Bilotti, and played by Sonny Davely and the boys. The music was arranged by Leon Cohen, the snow, snow, quick, quick snowman. I agree. The audience provided the storm of applause and the booze, so while we're off to drink the booze, here's a little ray of sunshine. I named this program. I'm sorry, I'll read that again. Again. <laughs> you 
Yeah, but in the end, 